670wina.com and it is 639 now today our special guest is Mr. Bob Wicklin and he has written a fabulous book called Eyes in the Sea by Mariner Media it's just hit the waves Wendy good morning Bob oh good morning Bruce uh, thanks for having me uh, Wendy, uh, do you want to start the round of questioning off? Sure, I'd be happy to. Now, Mr. Wicklund, good morning. And, uh, good morning. And you're here with us. Um, I've heard that Eyes of the Sea documents the habits of never-before-seen creatures and that it's based on living in the ocean for days at a time. Is that right? That's right, exactly. How do you live um, in the ocean for days at a time? Yeah, we had, um, we had several projects, and uh, one was uh, off the coast of Freeport, Bahamas, um, an underwater laboratory called the Hydro Lab, and we would actually uh, place scientists on the bottom of the ocean, and they would live down there for uh, at least a week to study the uh, the reefs. The, uh, the advantage is that they could spend all day long on the coral reefs, swimming around, doing their studies, and they didn't have to come up to the surface for, for decompression. Now, Bob, you know, um, your bio dates back... 50 years, and in the book you talk about meeting Prince Charles, Castro, Lloyd Bridges, uh, Clive Cussler, but the big question I have, did you ever meet Mel Fisher or Jacques Cousteau? No, I have not. I've met uh, Jacques Cousteau's um, son, uh, children, a few of those, but uh, I never met him directly. And of course Mel Fisher was doing all of that uh, underwater archaeology, i.e. sometimes treasure right. hunting. right. Now, you were always down in um, Florida, is that right? And some, uh, what were some of the other places you were at? Well, my, uh, I started out my career diving off the coast of New Jersey. Oh, and, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I worked for uh, what is now a National Marine Fishery Service lab at Sandy Hook and was the uh, uh, dive examiner for the, for the Fish and Wildlife Service for, for a number of years and then moved to uh, Bahamas to start this hydro lab project for five years. Wow, you know, because in the 60s, I remember as a young child, I'm no youngster, and I remember there was a, a lot of talk about underwater labs and even underwater communities back in the day. That's right, exactly. It was a, it was a big thing, and uh, it really never took off. Um, right now, the, uh, the university that I work for now is the University of North Carolina, Wilmington, and they have a, uh, a lab off Key Largo, Florida. It's called the Aquarius. It's the only one in the world. And uh, we put scientists down there uh, for 10 days at a time. And that's it. But at one time, there was just talk of, of hundreds, and, and there was hundreds of uh, labs worldwide just for a short period of time back in the, back in the 60s. It's pretty cool that you can be down there for you know days on end like that and do so much research nowadays. And that's right. The technology is really advanced. Um, underwater encounters that Bruce mentioned, one of them with Fidel Castro. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, well, um, part of my career, I, uh, I worked for seven years for the U.S. Senate, for Senator Lowell Weicker. Oh, I and remember him from Connecticut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he invited me to come along. He, uh, he arranged a trip to Cuba. It was a diplomatic trip to see if we can get uh, some scientific exchange for ocean projects. And we actually went down there and spent uh, the first night we were there. We, we spent an hour with Castro in, in his palace. And then on the last day, we, uh, they took us out diving off the Isle of Youth. And Castro's yacht came over the horizon. <laughs> um, and there he was. And he spent about 10 hours with us, uh, dove with us. I was on the bottom about 40 feet deep underneath the boats uh, taking photographs of the of the reefs and I noticed something on my left side and here comes Fidel Castro breath hole diving and I uh, swam right by me and I got a photograph of him. <laughs> was that a surreal moment for you? It would be for me. Well yeah it was, it was wild because you know on on the surface was all his bodyguards uh, and, he, and here I was probably one of the few people in the world that was alone with Fidel Castro on, on the bottom of the ocean no less. Yeah, I'm just curious, um, you know, what do you attribute um, what happened to all that uh, interest in underwater communities in the 60s? Do you think the space program eclipsed that, or did, what, what happened to all that? Because, I mean, 
for our listeners who are under 50 and for our listeners over 50 who will remember, it was so huge and there was all these futurists that said that we're going to farm the ocean bed. Yeah, well, part of it was, um, a big part of it was the space program. A lot, a lot of the money that was going into the oceans um, um, went, went to the space for a program, and that cut out a lot of, of some of these projects that were being dreamed up. But also, uh, it was practicality. L- living in the bottom of the ocean is not easy. Uh, these, these labs that we have operated over the years, I mean, it takes a lot of work, a lot of, it's um, it's pretty uh, pretty difficult. So living in the bottom of the ocean is uh, still is still going to happen, but I think our technology has got to be a little bit more advanced. Hey, uh, Bob, I have a question. You know, as we're into the Super Bowl here, and you know, we have a living language. English is so living, especially the American variety. And we remember that uh, people have too much to drink and they get the bends. But tell us about uh, diving. Uh, you know, you talked about the problems of underwater uh, farming and uh, living. Is it because of what they call the bends about uh, decompression? Yeah, well, I mean, that's one of the uh, issues. You know, of course, we're not a, we're a land-based animal, and we have to bring our own atmosphere with us when we go into the ocean. And um, diving from the surface to the the bottom, say down to 60 feet, you only have a very short time before you have to get into uh, decompression. Otherwise, the uh, buildup of nitrogen in your in your bloodstream and tissue will cause the bends, which is very dangerous. Um, and that's why we had these underwater labs. You could go down and spend a week in them, and they only have one 17-hour decompression on the end of it. So that that allowed it to uh, to work, but it's still difficult, and it's very specialized. Uh, the kind of person that would be able to do it is is, uh, you know, would, would, would have to be an uh, expert. We're speaking with Bob Wickland. He's the author of Eyes in the Sea and a career diver. And, Mr. Wickland, the critical importance that is mapped out in your book about our own well-being and the future based on your findings in the ocean has been cited by several people who have read and looked at your book. I just wanted to know how is that important to us, you know, on land? Well, the oceans, uh, everything that we, uh, everything that happens in the oceans affects us, uh, whether it's weather, uh, food, and, and we're not doing a very good job of, of protecting the oceans. The, uh, the, the oceans are in a lot of trouble. Uh, coral reefs, for an example, is the most diverse ecosystem in the world, and in my opinion, it's on its way to being uh, maybe the first ecosystem to uh, become extinct because of uh, global warming, the warm seas, uh, overfishing. Um, so, you know, the, the oceans are extremely important to us, um, but we're not doing a good job of protecting it. Yeah, I was just reading this morning about the Australian government having plans to establish the world's largest prote- protected marine area in the Coral Sea. Right. Well, we're talking to uh, Mr. Bob Wicklund, the author of Eyes in the Sea, from Mariner Media, it's available at dive shops, yachts, harbors, and of course uh, over the internet. And can readers still get the first 300 copies signed? Is that still happening? Oh yes. Okay. Thank yes. you very much for being on, and we'll have you back. And we look forward to uh, all your adventures. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Mr. Brooklyn. Thank you.